Good morning, everyone. It's great that you could join us this morning at Nottingham Community Church. I'm Nicola. I'm the new pastor here at KCC. And thank you for making me feel so welcome so far. Over the next few weeks, I'll be taking some time out to visit um, all of the church members so that we can get to know each other that little bit more. Please keep checking Facebook for updates on what is happening and, and upcoming events and developments from the services. And um, we'll be working on our online services over the next few weeks. So hopefully we'll be able to involve more of you guys, more members of the church in our services. This morning, I'm just going to show, share a short talk entitled, Who Do You Say I Am? Let us pray. Thank you, God, that we can join together, albeit online and not in person at the moment, but we have come in together as one. I pray that, Lord, you would speak to us this morning and help us to know you, to know you more and to hear you. Amen. So who do you say I am? If you're sat with someone right now and you ask them that question, who do you say I am? What do you think they would say? Would you like the answer? Maybe if you put it on Facebook and just put it out there on social media and, and said, who do you guys think I am? What do you think the many different replies would be? Would you be brave enough to even do it? But depending on how you know the person that you're asking, how well you know them, then it will determine the kind of answer that you receive. It depends on how close of a relationship you have with that person, if they know the real you, or just maybe what they see on social media, on your Facebook posts, or your Instagram posts, maybe what they see from a distance, maybe what they see when you're up front, um, maybe in your job role. Some people on the street were asked by a journalist who they thought Jesus was. Some of their answers are here. A historical figure. Just a normal person, just a man, just a person like us. Someone said that he was a marketing genius. Another said a selfless person. One guy said, no idea, I have not a clue who Jesus is. One person said he was a magician like David Copperfield. Another said that they believed that he existed. Another said that he was God's son. Another person said that he was like Muhammad and Gandhi and other religious leaders. Another person said it was someone he was someone to pray to. A woman said, he is my Lord and my Saviour. Another person said he's a messenger. Again, a different person said he was someone who was enlightened politically and morally. And the last person said, he was someone who saw something in others. He brought love and hope. Jesus asked this question of his disciples and it's recorded in three of the four Gospels in Matthew, Mark and Luke. Firstly, he asked the disciples, who do they say I am? He was talking about the people that, were, that he'd been speaking to, the people on the streets, the people that came to, to see him and to meet him. And then he said, who do you say I am? I'm just going to read from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Now Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid 
on earth will be forbidden in heaven and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. So who do they say I am? Jesus was asking, why are these people following me? Who is it that they think they are following? Who do they say I am? Now, these people came to listen to Jesus' teaching. They travelled from far. They sought him out. They, they sat and listened to him all day. Maybe they'd heard about Jesus from a friend, from a neighbour, from someone travelling through the village. Maybe they'd come across him by chance. There was talk that maybe he was John the Baptist, that John the Baptist had come back to life, or that Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the other prophets that they'd heard of. They didn't realise that someone greater was among them. Some had seen him heal or even possibly been healed themselves by Jesus. Maybe they saw him as a physician. Maybe the servants at the wedding celebration thought that he was a magician as it seen him turn water into wine. Maybe people had seen him working with his father when he was younger and thought of him as a carpenter. Some heard his teaching and maybe they saw him as an important rabbi, a teacher. The circumstances in which people saw Jesus would have supported their idea of who he was. Who do you say I am? The disciples, however, had not just seen Jesus from afar. They'd walked with him and they'd lived beside him for some time and they were close. They'd not just seen one healing or been or come and heard one part of a, a, a teaching that he was giving. It not, they'd not even seen one miracle, but they'd seen numerous of these. They'd seen him forgive sins. They'd seen him walk on water to drive out demons. They'd even seen him raise the dead. They'd been part of miracles. Just before asking this question, Jesus had fed the 4,000. The disciples were the ones that handed out the bread to the crowds and saw the massive multiplication of that which was to begin with. They'd been sent out themselves by Jesus to preach the gospel, to carry out healings and miracles themselves. Jesus was asking a very important question. He wasn't asking who others thought that he was, but who the disciples thought he was personally. The ideas and the thoughts of others didn't count at this moment. He wanted to distinguish between the general consensus or the general thoughts of what others thought he was or who he was to the personal. Who am I? Who am I to you? Maybe the disciples hadn't really thought about that themselves before and they had to look inward. This question was pivotal. pivotal. It determined how and why the disciples lived their lives. Did they think he was a prophet like the others? In verse 16, Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn it from any human being. Now Simon Peter said, You are the Messiah. You're the anointed one, the Christ, the Saviour, the Son of God. You are God. This was totally beyond human thinking. Jesus was saying, this isn't something that you've come up with within your own mind or with your own head or with your own imaginations. He'd not been told this by somebody else, but it had been revealed to him by God. Now, I was a primary school teacher for many years and, and at one point I was teaching in a church school and I was teaching a, the reception class, a class of four-year-olds. And the children, with it being a church school, obviously, the children had heard lots of Bible stories. We used to have a weekly Bible story time. They went to assemblies every day and heard about Jesus and, and, and characters from the Bible. And one day, just before the children were going home, we were all sat on the carpet having a story time. Now, this wasn't a story from the Bible. It was just a general story that you would read to four-year-olds. And I noticed a boy that was sat near the back and his head was in his hands and he was really concentrating. He was in real deep thought and he started to become really teary and started to, to cry and to weep. I asked if he was okay and the reply that he gave me knocked me for six. 
This is what he said. I was thinking about Jesus and that he died for all the wrong things I have done because he loves me. And I was saying sorry and asking him to forgive me and to be my special friend. Now this boy had heard stories just like the rest of the class, but God revealed this to him. God enabled this four-year-old child to understand who Jesus was. A couple of weeks later, this same boy ran up to me in the playground when I was on playground duty and said that he'd friend, his friend had fallen over and hurt his leg. And then he followed with this. But it's okay, you don't have to come and see him because I prayed for him and Jesus has healed him. This boy's life and understanding was changed. His understanding of who Jesus was and what Jesus could do and who he was to him had changed. Jesus to this boy was not a character in a story or someone he'd heard about in assembly. Jesus had become real to him. Who do you say I am? Now, how you see Jesus reflects how you live your life. In verse 18, it says, Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. The disciples' lives were dedicated to Jesus. They lived for him. They followed him. They learned from him. They did what he asked them. Peter's life would not be the same. Knowing Jesus um, had transformed his life in both the present and for the future. Now, how you see Jesus reflects in how you live your life too. Who do you say I am? What if Jesus were going to ask you that question today? Not who do they say I am? What does your spouse or who does your spouse think I am or your parents or your friends or your colleagues or even the person sat next to you in church? But who do you say I am? How would you answer that question? Would you say that he was a good man? Would you say that he was a historical figure in a historical document? Would it be someone I know a lot about from the Bible? Someone that I learn about at church and talk about at church? Would you say that he's God? Or would you say that he is my God? We individually have to make a choice about who we believe Jesus to be. No one else can decide for us. The boy in the reception class acknowledged Jesus as God, as saviour, as friend. He was four years old. The disciples' lives were never the same when they met Jesus. They were transformed. They had a new purpose, a new meaning, a new hope and a new revelation. Many people had been around Jesus and followed him around, but never really knew him, never understood who he really was. And that is true today. Many people today know a lot about Jesus, but they don't know him. They may read the Bible and pray daily. They may attend church regularly. They might do all the right things. They might have seen miracles happen in other people's lives but they've never had that personal heart revelation of who he is, that personal relationship. Now, the answer to the question, who do you say I am, has eternal consequences. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you have that you are saved. Believing in Jesus and recognising him as Lord is part of your salvation and how we are able to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. Doesn't also, doesn't just have uh, eternal consequences, but it also affects how we live our lives. Depending on who we say Jesus is, determines how we live our lives. It determines how we spend our time. It determines how we treat others. 
how we love others, how we forgive even when it's difficult, how we behave, how we act or how we react to others and situations. It affects how we use our finances and what we do with that which God has given us. It reflects how we talk with him, how we listen and how we follow his leading. It affects how we put him first and not ourselves. It affects whether or not we give our all. Does Jesus have all of you? One day Jesus will say to you, who do you say I am? What will you say? And will your life reflect that answer? Let us pray. Lord, I just pray that each person listening will be able to answer that question just as Peter did. You are God. You are my God. You are the Messiah. I pray, God, that you would reveal more of yourself to us, that we would be closer to you and that our lives will reflect our understanding and revelation of who you are and that we would live our lives to reflect who we say you are. Lord, I pray for anyone who doesn't yet know you personally. I pray, God, that, that Lord, that you would speak to them directly into their hearts. Lord, and their head knowledge will become heart knowledge. Lord, and that they would, be have, that they would have a, a life transformed by you and that they would live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you'd like to speak to anyone or you would like to know more about Jesus and how to know him more, please um, send us a message on, uh, on Facebook, a private message on Facebook, and we will be happy to connect with you to discuss things further. Um, thank you for being here this morning. Have a great week. Don't forget to check out Facebook for updates. And it's great that you could be with us. And um, hopefully I'll be able to come and meet some of you this week um, as, I, um, as I start to come and, and visit each and every one of you at KCC. Be blessed.